give or take 23 miles. How many of you have seen the movie Hidden Figures? Listen, if you live on the Space Coast and you haven't watched that movie yet, I'll put it down as required reading or watching or something. Just, just put it on. Bill, we know you never make it through a movie anymore. But Oh, wait, that's me. It's not Bill. Good to see you guys this morning. We are glad you're here. Um, you know, there are things that blow me... It, the folks who, especially in the 60s and 70s, figured out the math of landing a spaceship back here on Earth. You know, we, we hillbillies know how to launch stuff. It just never comes down where we think it should, right? But to look at the math, and she says within 23 miles, it just, it just blows me away. And here's the thing. The smartest person you know, the, the brilliant person that you know about has a grain of sand in the beach of God's knowledge. So far beyond what we can imagine or think or do. And as we get into this series today, we're going to talk about this idea of God is always speaking. But we're starting a series on Psalms. It's a, a book of songs that was written over a thousand years, there's psalms from all different people. We typically know about one person. Which person do we know about that wrote psalms? David. David. We know about David, and those are Davidic psalms. If you want to sound really smart, you could say uh, Davidic, or as uh, when they used to announce them, they would say El David songs, which sounds Spanish to me. Um, El David. Como esta? Vamos a la playa. What did I say? Do you know what I just said? We are going to the beach. That's the, if you grew up in Miami, that's what you heard all the time. Vamos a la playa. Mira, mira. We are going to the beach. Look, look. Sorry. I'm working on my Spanish again. I've got a long way to go. And like they used to say in the movies, and a short time to get there. So, you know, all the great moments of our lives have music. Most of us had a favorite song. We, we know what a song's like that we like. There's, a, there's something that we hear. So I'm going to just throw a, a few songs out. Some are really old, and some of you young folks may not know it, but I'm going to do it anyway. So we're going to start with this one and see how you guys do. You follow up with whatever you think is next. You ready? Hit the road, Jack. That's bad, really bad. This one, you only have to do a couple of noises, okay? Sweet Caroline. Not bad, not bad. It's a small world. That's really sad. Want to tell you a story about a... Gosh, that is amazing. Sit right back and you hear a tale. Not bad. Sunday, Monday... Pretty good. I actually heard that one a few times this week with the passing of, uh, not Lenny and Squiggy. What was her name? Cindy Williams. Thank you. Sorry. Watch this one. This is going to lead to a physical reaction. If you're happy and you know it. Okay. You know, the song we sang never once. The first time I ever heard that. Now, the artist was at Night of Joy. This is years ago. And he said, which I said to David, I'm not sure this is a true statement, but he's what he, told, what he told us. And he may have just been a showman, and he said the same thing to every group he sang that song at. But he said, this is the first time I've sang this song publicly. And I was so moved. What a great song to remind us that everything we walk through, never once will he leave you alone. You may feel alone. You may feel like you don't have... And so... God has given us the Psalms. It's not on accident that there's this middle of the Bible that if you actually don't use an app and you actually get this paper, old-fashioned paper Bible, um, and you don't use a, a tablet like Moses. Um, you, did you ever realize that? We've gone back to tablets. We started with tablets. Now we're back to tablets. And every once in a while, somebody will say, you mean you don't use a real Bible? And I'm like... You mean on stone? No, I don't. You mean on papyrus? No. You mean as a scroll? No, don't use that. I have a paper Bible. At, do you mean a paper Bible? That's actually like the fourth upgrade. It's like 
Bible 4.0, it's paper. And then we're back to tablet. I don't know what happened, but... So it's in the middle. You open up your Bible, you'll find it. And I will tell you this, if you're going through a hard time, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, whatever you're going through, Psalms is one of the best things to read because it's written over a thousand years, all kind of authors. Moses even wrote one. That dude's talented. And by the way, Moses made a few mistakes. Did you know that? By, by the way, did you know anybody who writes Christian music is imperfect? Have you figured this out yet? So the middle of the Bible, Psalms, was written by like murderers and stuff. Like every once in a while, somebody said, we can't sing that song. That person who wrote that is messed up. <laughs> yeah, the whole Psalms. That's the, you, oh, you know, you're talking about the new thing. Now, theologically, we need to make sure our theology is right when it comes to uh, uh, singing. And that's one of the reasons we sing. The majority of our songs are 90% just from Scripture. It's a verse that Scripture said or something Scripture said. Why? To remind us. Because we tend to remember songs more than verses. How many of you are really good at remembering names? Don't raise your hand too high because people don't like you. I'm just kidding. I'm, ter I'm terrible. I had somebody tell me one time I shouldn't be a pastor and I agreed with them. I said, you're right. Because I like, hey dude, how's it going? The best thing, if you go to a really traditional church and you're a pastor, you just say, hey brother. And then you don't even have to, you don't even have to try. They'll be like, my name's Bob. You're like, I know Bob, brother. And then you just call him brother the rest of the time, and then you don't have to worry about it. So over a thousand years, all these authors, why? Because there's something in Psalms that speaks to us. Every human emotion is Psalm. By the way, be careful of theology that comes from Psalms, because sometimes the guy's just venting. And that's one of the reasons Psalm speaks to us, because we're reading it, and we're like, yes, kill all my enemies. Right? And, and so there's something in it that that relates to us and we get. And so as we look at Psalms, today we're going to talk about, we're going to be doing that for the next four weeks, and today I'm going to talk about this idea of God is always speaking to us. And we're going to look in Psalms 19 how he does, because God speaks to us different ways. And typically not an audible voice. I believe God can still do that. I know there's pastors who say he can't do that, but I never say can't and God in the same sentence. So, you know, can God make a rock he can't lift? If he wants to whatever, right? And so if your phone's ringing, it's God correcting me. So feel free to. <laughs> so let's talk about these three things. Number one, God speaks through creation. Psalms 19, one through six, read it with me. Here we go. The heavens declare the glory of God. You don't have to read it out loud. I, I mean, you can, it doesn't bother me, but the people sitting next to you might wonder why you're getting words wrong. The pastor talks too fast for you to read along. All right. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of his hand. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Well, truthfully, they're discovering that there is sound, but that's another. It's outside of our hearing. So is that sound? I don't think. That hurts my brain to think about that stuff. You can tell I watched Nova recently. And now I have no idea what I'm talking about. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes into all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It's like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. Like a champion rejoicing to run its course. He rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. Now, God is not in a tree, but God can be seen by the complexity of the tree. When is the last time that you walked outside and just looked up? Maybe you were looking for a balloon this week. <laughs> Who's the, you might be a redneck guy. What's his name? Jeff Foxworthy. Jeff Foxworthy posted last night that he was going to let a red balloon go. He said in the country it won't last long. You ever see something that just blew you away? Maybe you saw an asteroid go through the atmosphere and you went, whoa, they came back to get me. <laughs> right? Maybe you looked at the stars and you were just overwhelmed. Maybe you got up in the mountains where you looked and you said, wow, it's amazing. 
This week, on the coldest weather ever in New Hampshire, on one of the mountains in New Hampshire, I think it was negative 114 wind chill. They said it got so cold that the atmosphere actually went lower in that area, and that mountain was in a different part of the atmosphere than we're in. I didn't even, did any of you know that could happen? I thought, I memorized it in school. We had to know the order. I didn't know they could just move it around. Freaked me out a little bit. Blew me away. I'm like, what? Do you realize that if it wasn't for Jupiter, we wouldn't be here? Because all these asteroids and all these meteors coming across our solar system are headed towards us. And then Jupiter just sucks them in and eats them. It's the way we're able to get our spacecraft way out into space. We use Jupiter to rocket, rocket it past them to get some, some momentum going because Jupiter has such a massive mass that it pulls everything in, but we also utilize it to slingshot us. It's a, amazing what we're learning more and more and more. And can I be honest with you? I don't know anything. There's a guy I know that worked at the Space Center for years, and when he talks to me about space, I just... One day he was talking to me about heaven, and here's what he said to me. I think heaven's in a different dimension. And I went, okay. And then he went on about between this and between these atoms and between that. And I went, and then I watched Ant-Man. I was like, totally makes sense, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's pretty bad we need a superhero movie to help us. You ever seen something that blow you away? One of my favorite pictures I brought with me. My wife took this. We went to Ireland. We were delayed for 24 hours going. We got to be there for 12 hours. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. I've never had a hangover before from alcohol, but I have from a plane. It's very exciting. This is not the picture. We have a simple name for this picture, but it's really an amazing picture. We have a very simple two-word name, and here it is. It is Bird Butt. Because my wife went to take a picture down the street, this beautiful picture of Dublin, and she over this canal, and this bird decided, bird butt. <laughs> and she just happened to take this picture with her phone at just the right moment, bird butt. But, but, <laughs> it's amazing. Isn't that remarkable? Did you know they have figured out that just looking at a picture of nature calms you down? If you have a cubicle and you have a boss who's a doofus, you need some extra pictures of nature in your cubicle. But they've actually discovered it will calm you down. If you have students and you teach school, put a couple nature pictures up. Let that ADD kid stare at that for a few minutes. When's the last time you've been out to get still? See, we get so busy that we don't hear God. Life is always pushing us along. When, when we as humans create things, we tend to fill our lives with everything except nature. That's one of the reasons why early on when they were developing cities, they had to say, you know what? We need to save some space so people can get some sanity away from this concrete When's the last time you drove out to the water? Put your phone down and just thanked God for a few minutes. Listen to this verse, Romans 1.20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power, divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood by what's been made, so people are without excuse. And so whether we look at the stars and are amazed, or whether we look at water, would you say, oh, oh, would you say, ah, ah, would you say, ooh, ooh, it's just water. You pour a glass of water all the time, don't you? Did you realize if it wasn't for the properties of water, you wouldn't be here either? Water, right before it freezes, expands. They don't know exactly why. It has something to do with the covalent bonds, but they don't know exactly why it does what it does. But most things, when they get colder, they get more and more dense, right? And water does too, until right before it becomes ice. You know what it does? It expands. So when you're drinking a glass of water, the ice hits you in the nose the whole time, and you're like, oh. 
But the truth is, if it wasn't for that, most of the earth would be covered with ice and there would be nothing living in any lake that was cold enough to freeze because the ice would freeze and sink and freeze and sink. And instead, the ice freezes. And here's what's amazing. It insulates the water below it. Huh, what a coincidence. By the way, Peter Lord labeled a coincidence, a miracle where God chooses to remain anonymous. When we look at what God's done, we realize <laughs> he's a lot smarter than me. And by the way, sometimes the best thing you can recognize in your life is to realize who you are compared to him. When it talks about the fear of God, it's not talking about being afraid of God. It's talking about being in awe of God. Recognizing, wow, look what God has done. Look at what he's made. And yet that God is the same God that says, I know you by name. Wow. I want to encourage you, number one, take time to get quiet and thankful in creation. Take some time this week. Take some time today. I don't care if it's five minutes. Some of you need to walk into your yard. And not be doing something. Not be trying to kill whatever bug you have out there. But just stop. And whether it's look up at the sky or look down at the grass. Take a moment just to thank God for all that he's created. Number two. God speaks through his word. Do you have a favorite verse? How many of you have a favorite verse? If you don't have a favorite verse, I encourage you to get one. And if you have a favorite verse and it's only your favorite verse because it's the only verse you know, I encourage you to get a different one. Or it's only your favorite verse because somebody told you it was a good verse, okay? Get a different verse. But get a verse that speaks to you. My favorite verse, I'm going to tell you, it's very simple. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. For those of you who know me, you know that that being still part is pretty hard for me. I don't do still, not well. And that first part freaks me out a little bit because I, was, I grew up with pull up yourself up by your bootstraps, keep going, do what you can do, make things better. And it was always about I've got to do something to fix something. And the Bible says God will fight for you. You need only be still. See, I like the verse that says, the horse is prepared for the battle, but the battle belongs to the Lord, which means I got to do my part so God can do his. And I like that. But Exodus 14, 14 reminds me that it's not about me. That there's times in life that I can't fix what's broken. There's times in life that I can't control what somebody says. I know that's a shocker. There's times in life that I can't control what someone does. Do you have somebody in your life who's doing something and you're like, if I could only fix that, my life would be better. Are there times in life that you can't even control you? Come on, let's be honest. Right? Psalms 19, 7 through 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Time out. If you don't use scripture for anything else and you start with this idea of understanding that the scripture will give you wisdom. One of the smartest men in the world, David's son, wrote Proverbs. Now he was smart and not always smart. He was smart with wisdom. He knew a lot of things, but he often made bad decisions. Did you know that about him? But it doesn't mean you can't learn from him. Did you know that everybody in the Bible made mistakes? When you're reading Psalms, you're reading a murderer's verses. When you're reading Proverbs, you're reading about a guy who married way too much and way too wrong. And made a lot of dumb decisions. But guess what? You still learn from the wisdom that God gave him. When's the last time you said, God, would you give me wisdom? Are you struggling with a decision right now? Maybe this is the part of this sermon you need. God, would you give me wisdom? God, maybe give me a verse for that thing that I'm dealing with and begin to look it up. I'll talk about that in just a second. 
The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than pure gold. Sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warmed in, warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Are you struggling with something in life? You know, one of the great things about Google is that you can say anger, Bible verse, enter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study this for a little bit until I settle down. Discouragement, Bible verse, enter. Relationship, Bible verse, enter. Children, Bible verse, enter. Work, Bible verse, enter. Finance, Bible verse, enter. And then say, God, give me a verse to focus on. And you listen, you can cut and paste it. You can print it. You can put it in your car. You can put it on your bathroom window. You can put it in your cubicle. And ask God to give you wisdom. 2 Timothy says this, all scripture is God-breathed, is useful for teaching. That's kind of my deal right here, right? Rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Why? So the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Listen, if you're struggling with discouragement or depression, the book of Psalms is great to read. If you wake up in the middle of the night, can't sleep, Okay, don't do like I did last night. Read Deuteronomy, dumbest thing I've ever done. That will not put you back to sleep. That's where I was. I saw I was going. But read the Psalms. Re read about the struggles they're having. Re read about what the psalmist is saying about how he's feeling, what's going on in life, what they're dealing with, and then they turn it around to praise God for how good he is. These are people from Thousands of years ago, you ready for this? Dealing with the exact same pressures you're dealing with. But Eric, they didn't have the technology where people can bully me at all hours of the day. Yeah, they had people actually bullying them all hours of the day. When they talk about arrows, they don't mean a word somebody was saying to them. But you can apply it that way to you. That's what's so good about God's word. Get a verse. Open a chapter. If you're struggling physically, mentally, emotionally, Psalms is a great place to just open up and start reading. And let God give you wisdom for what you need. I want to encourage you to commit to a daily Bible reading plan. If you don't have one, there's apps that have it. There's a buy, you can actually buy a Bible that is a year through the Bible. It gives you the dates and you can flip it open if you like paper Bibles. If you like digital Bibles, there's so many resources I couldn't even start. We, we give away the daily bread back here, but I also have it on my app that I, I open every day. There's lots of ways that you can get a daily Bible reading plan. But here's the deal. When you read the Bible, don't read it like spaghetti. What do you do with spaghetti once you boil it? You put it in a strainer, right? And you strain everything out. A lot of us read and we have a mind like a steel sieve. And we need to have a mind like a steel trap. So what do we need to do? Get at least one verse that you kind of focus on for the day. And if you're like me, you read it, you do your devotional, you put it down, you go to make your coffee, and you think, what did I just read? And you don't know. So guess what you have to do? Go look back and say, okay. And, and take one piece of that with you for the day. Most Christians don't hear God's voice because we've already decided we're not going to do what he said. If you want to hear from God, one of the rules is you can't say no, Lord. Because when you say no, Lord, it's like putting your fingers in your ears. If you want the Holy Spirit to guide you, you have to let God guide you. Number three, God's Spirit teaches and reminds us. I had somebody send me a reminder yesterday. Last week, they came up to me at church. By the way, the worst time to tell me something is at church. The best time to tell me something is 12 times. So yesterday, somebody texted me and they said, Pastor, thank you so much for being willing to recommend a book to me that you told me about Sunday. 
Can't wait to hear what it is. They were really sweet. And I went, oh, yeah. A reminder. Ding. They're in this service, by the way. Ding. And I went, oh. That's what God does to you. He doesn't nag you. He doesn't push you down. But he'll remind you. So that when you're praying, you realize you've had a wrong attitude about this. You thought you were really right, but you did it in a wrong way. You need to love that person that's hard to love. You need to forgive that person that's hard to forgive. You need to be careful with your words. You need to not make driving to get somewhere as important as the people in your car. There was this guy in the 70s called Fred Sanford. And when something went wrong, he'd grab his chest. And who did he tell he was coming? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I'm coming. When the whole, this is a big one. That's right. I forgot about that part. So when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, it's like that. It's like, oh. You, you mean the task I'm accomplishing is not as important as the people I'm accomplishing it with? That doesn't fit my personality. Yeah. God's working on me. God's working on us. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I'll be blameless, innocent of great transgressions. And then I love this. May the words of my mouth, and not only the words, but the meditations, what I'm focusing on, of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. If you're struggling with something in your life, the reason you get a verse is to keep you from focusing on what that issue is and help you focus on what God's answer is. If you're always staring at your request, it's like looking in the rearview mirror while driving. It's not a good idea, unless you're driving a Tesla. Did you catch that? Because it drives itself. Did you? Never mind. I told the Sunday school class this morning that it's always funny that I never know how people are going to respond to something I say. And every once in a while they laugh and I'm like, oh, they laugh. That wasn't funny. And then I say something that I think is funny. Just like what you just did. Just... We have no idea what you're talking about, Pastor. Keep going. Listen to this verse, John 14, 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. And ding! Remind you of everything I've said to you. Take time to reflect and confess daily. Because sometimes we're not aware when we go through life in a hurry. That's why we have to get still. That's why we have to back away. This week, I lost my keys. I know that never happens. Okay, it happens every week all the time. But this week when I locked my key, lost my keys, I have a tile on my keys, a little thing that dings. And I can use my phone and say, find keys. And it goes, bing. And if I have my keys and I can't find my phone, I can push the tile and it goes bing, bing, bing. But this week, I got on my phone, I said, I'll find my keys, and it said, battery dead. And I went, oh no. So I went through the whole house. I looked under stuff and over stuff and through stuff. And then finally, I walked into the bedroom where I thought I left him and I just stopped and looked around. And there they were. On the dresser, right where I left them. But I had to back away and stop to see them. Listen, I want to encourage you. God's speaking to you, but you've got to stop all your busyness and let him speak to you. Spend some time in his word. Spend some time praising him. Spend some time in nature. Let his Holy Spirit speak to you and remind you of what matters. What matters? If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, that's the most important decision you can make. The Holy Spirit will pull on your heart and tug on you, but he won't make you do anything. But if you're ready to surrender your life to Christ, knowing that Jesus died and rose again, you can do that today. I'll be here after the service and you can say, Eric, I want to pray and give my life to Christ. Maybe you just need more information about what it means to be a Christian. On the table back, there's all kind of stuff, those old paper things you can pick up and actually read. We'll give you some help. If you need prayer, if you'd let us know in the back of your bulletin, you can just turn in a prayer request when our offering basket goes around in a minute. You can drop that in the offering basket. Or if you didn't have time to do that, you can drop it in the box on your way out. I love on Tuesdays to pray for you guys. Let's close in prayer.
Father, I thank you so much for your word, for your creation, for your spirit. All of the ways you speak to our hearts, continue to do that. May we hear your voice in all the things we say and do. May we hear your voice when we get still. May we hear your voice as we look around and see how awesome you are and how awesome what you've made is. We thank you for all you've done and all you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen.